Let's talk about how to make your business better by understanding a th story about garbage. That's right, garbage. I'm Lawrence Tam, your Cairo coach. We're gonna talk about garbage bins. You see here, there's four bins here in my house. There's the red bin, which is the garbage for you know everyday waste. The blue bin is for recycling for paper. Uh, the yellow bin is for recycling of plastic and glass. And the green bin is the recycling for, you know, uh, you know, uh, for plants and, and everything else, right? So if you notice, I want you to notice something, right? This is actually started, I believe in the UK and uh, they went to Ogilvy, one of the top um, marketing firms in the UK to ask them, how do we get people more to recycle, right? I mean, obviously an environmental thing uh, is such a big thing. We want to get people to recycle. And so you would think, right, just by everybody wanting to recycle or wanting something better for the environment would be good enough to really help people to make a decision on um, wanting to recycle more, but that's not how human brain works. So Ogilvy changed the thought process of reverse engineering. What is the ultimate outcome? What's the objective? Well, the object, objective, of course, is to get people to recycle more, right? But how do you do that? Well, you can actually use the, you know, getting people to recycle, as I mentioned, or you make it painful to not recycle. And what do you mean by that? Well, look at the size of these bins, okay? Now, I just want you to notice the size difference. I'll move this over here a little bit. So, you know, I'm gonna come down here. You see the red bin there? That red bin right there is basically the, the size for our everyday waste. Now we've got a household of five people here and that's all that garbage is gonna to have to fit into that red bin. But look at the size, the difference between the green bin, the yellow bin and the blue bin and to the red bin. What do you notice? Well, it's a lot smaller. So when you make it a lot smaller and that's the only one bin we have per week and I gotta get all of my garbage in there, what happens? Well, what happens is that you're gonna to have to fit everything, all your garbage in there and every single day, every single week into that one small bin. So how do you do that? Well, you're gonna to have to take out all the non-essential stuff like plastic, paper, and green stuff into and put them in the other bin so that therefore you can actually fit your regular garbage stuff in this bin where it doesn't go belong there. That is how you do that. It's a reverse engineer of how to do that, how you can actually create a change by wanting to recycle because you make it painful not to recycle. Another example, Tesla, right? Whether you like Elon Musk or not, the thing is, is that he was smart enough to go, he has a goal, his mission is to make all cars, you know, battery operated, right? And to re remove all gas power, uh, petrol cars or uh, gas powered cars. Well, why? Because he wants to change the environment. But wanting to change the environment, again, doesn't necessarily make someone want to buy an electric car. So how do we electrify the vehicles in the world? Well, you make the car sexy, you make the car freaking fast, you make the car silent, you make the car amazing, uh, uh, feet of technology and driving that you can download software every single week and make the car better. That's how you change the desire for someone to actually want to change to electric cars. That's how you can change the environment. Now, what does the environment have to do with anything to do with your practice? Well, here's the thing. Oftentimes, a lot of chiropractors I come across with will say, you know what? I want people to understand chiropractic by telling them about their nervous system and improving the function and improving their performance and, and you know how to take care of their spine. But the reality is, is that no one outside of chiropractic, no one cares about your spine. No one thinks about their spine unless they have an injury. And the thing is, no one cares about them improving their nervous system because that's not what they think about, right? You don't think about you know making sure that your teeth don't rot or everything, uh, uh, making sure that uh, you want to go to a healthcare class on how to brush your teeth. Do you to your dentist? Of course not. You care that the dentist, you go to the dentist and they clean your teeth and you brush your teeth and that's it. You don't need to worry about all the tooth decay and everything else until there's a problem. So the same thing when it comes to chiropractic. In chiropractic, if we communicate only that everybody has a spine needs to be adjusted, they don't care about that. Most. <laughs> Everybody outside of the profession don't care. What they do care about, each individual cares about something. And that is how you need to communicate. You gotta communicate the value that's important to that person. Now, oftentimes your goal isn't just to match them where they're at. What your goal is, see if you can stretch that because in, it almost imply, like you gotta think about what they want or what they say they want, but also infer what they really mean. That's the extra step that most people are not willing to do. If someone comes in for pain, of course that they want to get rid of their pain, but is it more to that? Is it why do they want to get rid of the pain? Is it because they want to have function better? They want to perform better? Is it because they want to play with their kids more? Is that because if they don't, if they're, if they're in that much pain, they won't be able to work? That is something that we have to get to. We, it's not about, this is nothing to do with manipulation. This is about what they want. You, but you've got to have that ability to be able to stretch. What do they really mean? What do they infer when they say they want X? That's the difference. 
in chiropractic, if you want to be better and have a better practice and have a better pa have, have better patients and clients in your practice, you got to be able to have them trust you. And how you trust them, how they trust you, is you got to be, have the ability to be able to tell them what they really do want inside. They might not be able to verbalize it. That's not their fault, right? But you got to be able to verbalize it and infer exactly what they're trying to say. If you can do that, that's the magical tip uh, and, and, and ability that you can master. If you can do that, you will win uh, most of your patients over. And because you're doing it, their intention, you're not selling chiropractic to them anymore, you're actually selling themselves to make a better choice. That is what actually selling is, is to help them decide on something that is for the betterment of them. So I hope that's been helpful. I'm Dr. Lawrence Tam, your chiropractic coach. Comment below, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed these videos because I'm trying to here to make your practice better. Talk to you soon.